Welcome to Electron Online, and here we're going to do a new series on RCL circuits. Now, RCL stands for resistors, capacitors, and inductors. Yes, L does stand for inductors. Another word for inductor is a coil. Now, these are very three very basic components in a circuit, and usually they interact with the voltage source when the voltage source is a time-varying source, like an AC uh, voltage source. That means alternating current, which means the current goes back and forth, it alternates, and so the voltage then goes from a positive to negative voltage and, and changes like a sinusoidal wave. In a circuit like that, the inductor and the capacitor have particular behaviors in such a way that across the voltage across an inductor will increase first as the voltage increases from the source, then the voltage will increase across the capacitor, and then the voltage, um, I should say resistor, and then the voltage will increase across the capacitor, and that will happen at different times. There's a phase difference, as we call it, between when these events occur. So the current that goes through the circuit will be affected by the way the inductor, the resistor, and the capacitor interact with the voltage source. Here's an equation that describes how the voltage across the, from the source varies with time. So you can have a maximum voltage, which is indicated here, and it changes according to a sine function or cosine function, and the frequency of the change of the source. So the source can change at 100 hertz or 200 hertz. We plug the numbers in here, and we can then find out how the voltage changes from the source, which will then affect the way the current and the voltage is affected by the circuits. Now, we're going to start off with doing what we call a series circuit, and later on I'll show you how to deal with uh, parallel circuits when we put these components in parallel. But now we first want to learn a little bit about the basics of how to deal with a circuit like this, and also we're going to start solving these problems using complex algebra, using uh, complex algebra and complex numbers. So, what do we need to know here? Well, the first thing we need to understand is how the phase difference works in a circuit like this. And here I have drawn how the voltage varies over time uh, from the source, and it turns out that the resistor is always in, in phase with the source, so the voltage across the resistor will also be at the very same time. So they are in phase. If I draw a little dotted line here, that would then represent the voltage across the resistor. Now, the amount of the voltage across the resistor can be different, so even though I, sh I showed as being the same height, it could be less, it could be more, depending upon the, the size of the components of the, uh, in the rest of the circuit. Now, how does the voltage across the inductor act? Well, the inductor gets a voltage across it faster and sooner than the voltage across the resistor. But in other words, it's ahead in time. It, there's a phase difference, and it's ahead in phase. So in other words, if we think of this, uh, this, this uh, graph right here as being a function of time with time increasing to the right, so what happens in front of it happens before. So what we can do is we can draw the voltage graph for the inductor in front of the voltage graph for the source or for the resistor, and it would lo look something like this. So we get a, a graph that looks kind of like this, like this, coming back this way, and this way, and this way, and this way. So you can see that there's a phase shift or a phase difference between the uh, the voltage across the source, the voltage across the resistor, and the voltage across the inductor. So this would be V sub L. L stands for inductor, so this is voltage across the inductor. You can see that it happens before the voltage reaches the maximum from the source or across the resistor. And then, since the capacitor, the voltage drop across the capacitor, happens after the voltage drop across the resistor, we can then see that there's a phase shift to the right, and it looks more like this. So that would be the voltage drop across the capacitor. Like that. So you can see that there's actually a phase shift to the right. How much is it shifted? Well, it turns out they're shifted about 90 degrees. I shouldn't say about. It's, ac it's actually exactly 90 degrees in either direction, which means that the voltage across the inductor happens one quarter of a complete phase, because 90 degrees is one quarter of 360 degrees, it happens one quarter of a phase before the voltage reaches the maximum across the resistor, and the voltage across the capacitor uh, reaches a maximum one quarter of a phase after the voltage across the resistor. So in actuality, the phase difference between the inductor and the capacitor are 180 degrees or a half a phase difference. 
Now we can do, we, what we can do here is draw a phasor diagram to see if it makes some sense out of it. So let's say that this is a phasor diagram. So this represents V max. And if the resistor has a maximum voltage across it like that, then we can see that since time advances in this direction, we can see that this would be a complete circle would be 360 degrees. So if we go 90 degrees ahead, 90 degrees ahead, we now have what we call the voltage across the inductor. And if we go 90, 90 degrees behind, then we have the voltage drop across the capacitor, so V sub C. So here we have, oh, I drew L sub L, I, I want to write V sub L. So here you can see that this is the voltage across the resistor, which is in phase with the source. Then we have the voltage drop across the inductor, which is 90 degrees ahead of the source. And we have the voltage drop across the capacitor, which is 90 degrees behind the source. So that's the basic understanding, at least I hope I got that across, the basic understanding of these three components in an RCL circuit, that the, they reach a maximum voltage across them at different times, so there's what we call a phase difference between them, and we're now going to use complex algebra or complex numbers to try and indicate how we then denote that so that we then try to find the total what we call impedance across the circuit and the current through the circuit, we can use that complex algebra in order to do that. So that's what the uh, objective is of these videos and I'll lead you through that step by step so that hopefully by the end you'll see exactly how to deal with RCL circuits, how to find the current in them, how to find the voltage across the components and how to find the impedance in the whole circuit. And I'll slowly develop how that is done.